Today's all about what's new in Illustrator 2024. Only not the stuff that Adobe's been hyping, the really great stuff that's been flying under the radar. My goal to have you saying yes, finally, over and over again. All right, so here we have it. Seven new Illustrator 2024 features that are super welcome and did their absolute best to fly totally under the radar. I know, best slide ever. Here's the list by the way, not necessarily in order of importance. The first three are like, yeah, I'm really, really psyched about these. The next three are, hmm, you know, they're, they're interesting. Number six is very odd. And then it, but it might, you might find it to be very helpful. And then number seven is absolutely essential because in the past retype was useless in my opinion. Anyway, you may know about the contextual taskbar. If I click someplace to select something, it, it leaps up on screen. It wasn't there a moment ago. Notice if I click off, it goes away. So it just appears when Illustrator thinks you want it, and then it appears right under whatever it is it thinks you want to work on. And that can get anywhere from extremely useful. This is great that it keeps hopping around with my type, but I don't want it to hop around every time I select a different item. This is just super irritating in my opinion. So really all you have to do, and this may hitch a little bit, all you have to do is just kind of move it to a different position. You cannot move it outside the document window the way you can inside Photoshop, but that should do it. That should pin it down. Notice it doesn't move around anymore. And then if you want it to move around, then click on a triple dot there. Notice you can choose pin bar position if you want to, but it pins automatically. As I say, that's the way it's behaving right this moment. If I choose reset though, it's going to leap over there and now it's going to continue leaping around. At number two, at least on my list, is the very welcome live star tool, meaning that you can make changes to a star after the fact, very conveniently, by the way. So I'll just go ahead and turn off these emojis for now and click on this empty star layer just so I have a place to work. And I'll select the star tool right there from the shape tool flyout menu. And for years now, you've been able to create stars from the center outward is the way it works. Now, th this is new that by default is going to create a five pointed star. Not only that, the opposite sides are aligned with each other so that you have a very welcome kind of five pointed star, I should think. Now you've been able to for years. You have all kinds of controls on the fly. You can press the up arrow key to increase the number of, of points, the down arrow key to decrease the number of points and so on. But now you can do it after the fact. And so if you have the properties panel open on screen, then you can work from there. I don't like the properties panel. It takes up too much room. So I'm going to go up to the control panel and click on shape. And you can see the same controls are here. And so we have R1 and R2. This is radius one for, actually it starts out being the external points and then R2 is for the internal points. We'll see that in a second. And then you've got a rotate a star angle value, I guess. I'll change it to 90 degrees right there, so it's upright. And then you can change the number of sides. You can either click the up arrow or click in there and press the up arrow key in order to increase the number of points down arrow to decrease. And so that's very welcome, I think. I just escaped out, which is why I guess I lost that last change. You also, if you have the bounding box turned on, you have these on canvas controls. And that's a control shift B, command shift B, by the way. And so if you work without the bounding box and you have to press that to bring it back up. So you can see these on canvas controls once again. If you drag up, you reduce the number of points, you drag down, you increase the number of points. This is analogous to how you work with live polygons in Illustrator these days. You also have these uh, little doohickeys right here. So these circles, these white circles. And so this guy is gonna allow you to change R1, which by default is the external radius, the radius of the external points from the center out, by the way, because it's a radius. You can move that in if you prefer. So then it's the internal radius instead. So it's totally up to you. And then you ha have to hunt around for the other one. Notice there's an, there's two of these things. And so this guy's gonna allow you to change R2, which again, by default is gonna be the internal radius. That that can change, of course. Now, it can also change where these, these doohickeys, these widgets are located. And so notice if I move my cursor very close to that corner point right there, then I can rotate this shape around. We've been able to do that for a while. I'm just showing you this because that's gonna change the location 
of these widgets. So I just want you to know that these things can move to different locations when you're working with live stars. Next, we have bold, italic, and underlined keystrokes, which is amazing. Actually, I can, in any other program, this would just be like run-of-the-mill stuff in any other non-Adobe program. But Adobe has been locked into this notion that you have to use designer styles and you can't just, you know, click a bold button. Anyway, it's Control shift b for bold and I for italic and U for underline. Here, let me show you. So I'll just go ahead. It, this assumes that the font you're working with has bold and italic styles. Underline, of course, is imposed by the application. But I'll just switch to the type tool and I could double click on the word super right there and if i press Control shift i or command shift i in the mac it becomes unitalic because i had it italicized and then Control shift command shift i again will make it italic if i press Control or command shift b it becomes bold if such a style is available Control or command shift i becomes italic and bold unitalic and bold sorry just regular bold and then if i want it to be underlined i would press Control shift or command shift u I don't want the space to be underlined, however, so I would select that and press that keyboard shortcut again in order to get rid of it. So we did common sense stuff. 37 years into Illustrator's existence, you can now uh, apply bold and italic and underline styles on the fly. For those of you who work with a lot of imported images, pixel-based images inside Illustrator, whether they are linked or embedded, doesn't matter, we have a couple of modest improvements to the links panel, meaningful. However, you may find them helpful. Basically, the idea is you can either delete or unembed multiple images all at once from the links panel without finding them all over your document. And so, for example, in my case, I traced these vectors here, hand trace them from the Apple emojis, the cool Apple emojis. But problem is they're, of course, pings. So they're, they're pixel-based images. And, and that's why I've gone ahead and expressed them thusly. Now, they could be spread all over the place. I want to make that clear. But they, they, they all happen to be right here on this one artboard. But if I wanted to see them all, all the images inside this document, I'd go to the window menu and choose links. And there they are. And now I can select multiples by clicking on one, shift-clicking on another. Or you can control or command-click to deselect or add to a selection, independent files. And then I could just click on this new trash can icon right here to bring up an alert message. It's asking me if I really want to do that. I'd click yes, and they all go away. So that's easy. I can also undo that deletion, of course, phew. And then they're all embedded. So I just copied and pasted them in here. And so what I can do is select them all once again, then go to the fly out menu and choose unembed. Previously, this is only available for one image at a time. And then you get to choose where you want to unembed your images, you know, select a folder and you can select this checkbox right here to unembed all the images to a single location. Real quick, do you like emojis? I think apples rank among the best, but they're all low res ping files, which is why I hand traced a few of them. No auto tracing applied. If you want this document along with some advice on how to use it, join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. And now some more of those swell new features in Illustrator 2024. At number five, you can now update a saved selection. This is really, truly minor, by the way, but most people don't even know you can save selections in Illustrator, so I thought I'd show it to you. The idea is, let's say I want to select all these items right here. And you can see they're on different layers, right? Because you can see the different colors assigned to them. So over here in the layers panel, you can see I've selected items on the emojis, circles, and labels layers. If I were to group them together just by pressing, you know, Control Command G, then that's gonna move them all to the frontmost layer. So they're all now on that emojis layer. You can see them right there if you look closely at that thumbnail. That's not what I want. Let's say I want to keep them on independent layers. This is the beauty of saving selections. And so you can either go to the select menu, and this command's been around for a while, or you can go down here to the bottom of the layers panel. There's this new guy. Click on it, and then choose save selection. 
And that way I could just go ahead and call this guy beaming, for example, click OK. And now notice these items remain on independent layers. And now if I were to click off in order to deselect the item, and now let's say I want to select it again, I could just drop down to this item. And you can also go to the select menu, that's fine, and choose beaming right there because I just saved it. Gosh, I forgot. And I'll just go ahead and select it. Now let's say you want to modify the contents of the selection right after you select it, by the way. You, this only works right after you've activated the thing. And then I could shift click on the eyes to deselect them. Let's say I don't want them to be part of it. And then I'll drop down here and choose update selection. If it's dimmed, you just need to choose the selection once again in order to activate it. But then I could update it. And now notice that if I clicked off and I went back down here, you know what it's going to be like. I'll choose beaming and now it's going to select those guys without the eyes. And I can drag them around just to demonstrate that the eyes are not selected. Oh, I made a terrible mistake. And so I'll go here and shift click on the eyes. Problem is if I go back down to this, update selection is dimmed. That's an oversight, by the way. It's just that it doesn't know that this is a selection it doesn't have that it doesn't have a dynamic link is basically the idea so you have to choose beaming that's going to deselect the eyes then shift click on them in order to add them back in there and then click on this guy and choose update selection and that's the advantage of working with saved selections by the way and updating them now in the most recent version of Illustrator. All right, so if you thought that last feature was a little bit quirky, this is downright, I, it might be the quirkiest feature I've ever seen in Illustrator, but I guess people have been requesting it. So no judgment, when you're using the black arrow tool or the group selection tool, you now have access to this thing called the enclosed mode, which you get by tapping the E key. So let me show you what that looks like. I'll go ahead and zoom in. Oops, kind of missed the zoom right there, but I want this guy. And let's say I've, I've got the black arrow, or if you prefer the selection tool active, and I just partially marquee a bunch of stuff right here. Then I'm gonna select it all. Everything that was even partially inside my selection outline gets selected. And so I, I, I guess some people are just like, no, I don't want that. I, I want to, so again, I get it. I get it actually, because maybe I just want to select the eyes and the eyebrows. So I'll click off to deselect and then I'll just drag a, a, a pretty big marquee. Can you see it right there? It's a little bit hard to see actually, but I only want the stuff that's 100% inside the marquee to get selected, then you tap. Watch my cursor, tap the E key. You don't have to hold it, but now you get these little brackets that shows you you're working inside the enclosed mode and now release and you'll just get the stuff that was 100% enclosed inside the marquee. And again, this also works with the group selection tool. And now for those lucky few who have stuck with me this entire time, feature number seven, the best of them all and actually usable retype. When, and I say this in celebration of retype in general. It's a great idea. So you, you find some text on the web. It's in a form of an image. Paste it into Illustrator and then try to identify what's going on. Or it could be type that's been converted to outlines. Thing is, it didn't work very well. It's been in beta, so that's forgivable, I guess. I don't know why they gave it to us in such bad shape in the first place. But now it works much better and you can edit the type. So imagine... Well, don't imagine. Here it is. This text has been converted to outlines. So, of course, I had this editable text in the first place, but I converted it to outlines by going up to the type menu and choosing this now dimmed command to convert the type to path outline so I can hand it off to somebody else and they can, of course, print the text without any problem. So they don't need the font, but they can't edit the text. So let's say you're on the receiving end of this and you want to be able to edit it. Then you can select it and then go up to the type menu, choose retype, still in beta. And then we've got match font, which is kind of what we had before. And then we've got edit text, which is totally new. So I'll choose match font. It may take a moment or two for Illustrator to do its thing to figure out what fonts it can find. And notice some of the text is selectable and some is not. The white text for some reason I can't get to. That's just, it's still in beta, I guess. But notice I'll select the word welcome and it'll tell me, hey, it's probably set in source serif four, or it could be set in some other font. It's been doing this for a long time. It's just said, generally speaking, it would get the fonts wrong and then you'd go and find more wrong fonts. But it's still, 
it's still a head scratcher, even though if you go, okay, even though this kerning is way off, let's say I believe you that it's source error four, that's right, actually, then I would just download it from Adobe Fonts. If I could, I could activate it. But that was kind of it. Then what? What do you do? I just and then you go recreate the text or something. And you know, if it's wrong, then whatever. You you get the idea. And you definitely get the idea if you've tried this in the past. Now notice if I click exit, which I think is really still a strange interface. I don't exit. Notice that. I, I just switched to a different mode that allows me to edit the text, which is great. Now if I click edit text, it basically says, okay, any of these things that are clickable, you you can edit now. You can you can convert to editable text. So I could take the word absolute and I could click apply and it is now editable text. It gets rid of the outline so you're not cluttering up your document and it should look just brilliant when it works. And so I could, in addition to clicking on some text to selecting, clicking apply, I can just double click on these items. And generally they're gonna be one word at a time, but you never know, they may be in some other different kind of container. And then once you're done, you should be able to just click exit and you're out of the mode, but that doesn't necessarily get you out of the mode. So you may have to just close out of the panel, what have you, again, still in beta, I guess. And I'll, I'll notice at this point, some of my text is editable point type, but it's all grouped together. I can see it's a group up here on the far left side of the control panel. You can see that in the properties panel as well. So I'll press control shift G, command shift G on the Mac, just to ungroup everything, click off. And then I could say, hey, I'll take this word welcome, double click in order to switch to the type tool, double click again to select the entire word and just change that to overdue. And I can now edit that text. Are you as psyched about this stuff as I am? Let me know. Want those hand-drawn vector-based emojis? Then join me at patreon.com slash deke now. Then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter. Not to mention right here at YouTube, like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. I'm Deke McClelland. This is Deke Now.